program opens with a stock shot of the spaceship Enterprise flying through space. The Enterprise is passing near Deep Space Station J7 in a quadrant that is under dispute. Both the Klingons and the Federation claim rights to the territory, and especially to the nearby Sherman's planet. Under the Organian Peace Treaty, the planet will be granted to the side that is deemed the most able to run and develop it efficiently. Wait. Act 1, fade in. Space Station hangs against the backdrop of stars, slowly growing in size as the Enterprise approaches. Whoops! Get the launch. Starting 4523.3. Deep Space Station K7 has issued a priority one call. More than an emergency, it signals near a total disaster. We can only assume the Klingons have attacked the station. We are going in an armed to battle. Scene cool 1, trash. bridge. Everyone on the bridge stares intensely, watching the scene or the screen showing the space station. Main facers, armed and ready. There's nothing, just the station, sir. A priority one distress call, and they're sitting there, absolutely peaceful. Lieutenant Ahura breaks up space silence. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> space station K-7, this is Captain Kirk of the Enterprise. What is your emergency? Captain Kirk, this is Commander Lurie. I must apologize for the distress call. Commander Lurie, you have issued a priority one distress signal. State the nature of your emergency. Uh, perhaps you had better beam over. I, uh, I'll try to explain. You'll, you'll try to explain? <laughs> you better be prepared to do more than that. Kirk out. Mr. Chekhov, maintain battle readiness. Who are you have transporter room? Stand by, Mr. Spock. I'll need your help. Scene 2, Lurie's office on the space station. Lurie, Barris, and Darvin. Kirk and Spock materialize. Kirk is furious as he begins to talk, talking to Lurie as soon as the materializing is complete. Ah, Commander Lurie, if there is no emergency, why did you order a priority one distress call? I ordered it, Captain. Captain Kirk, this is Nils Barris. He's out from... He's from... He's out from Earth to take charge of the development project for Sherman's planet. And that gives you the authority to put a whole quadrant on defense alert? Mr. Barris is the, is the Federation Undersecretary in the charge of the agricultural affairs in this quadrant. This is my assistant, Arna Darwin. Now, Captain, I want all available security guards. I want them posted around the storage compartments. Storage compartments? What storage compartments? The storage compartments with the quadrant type alley. The, what the, what is this? We we so what? Quadro Tricalit is not we, Captain. I do not expect you or your first officer to know about such things, but Quadro Tricol is a high yield grain, a four lobed hybrid of wheat and rye and perennial. A perennial. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the root grain Tricol can trace its ancestry all the way back to 20th century Canada when. Yeah, I think you've made your point, Mr. Spock. Captain, Quadrotilatical is the only earth grain that will grow on Sherman's planet. We have several tons of it here on the station, and it's very important that that, that gain reach Sherman's planet, that that grain reaches Sherman's planet safely. Mr. Barris thinks that the Klingon agents may try to sabotage it. You should have priority one distress call because of a couple of tons of wheat. Quadrotilatical. Whatever. Of course, I... Mr. Barris, you summoned the Enterprise here without an emergency. Now you will take full responsibility for it. Misuse of the Priority One Channel is a Federation offense. I did not misuse the Priority, priority One Channel. I want that grain protected. Captain Kirk, couldn't you at least post a couple of guards? We do get a large number of ships passing through. It would be a logical precaution, Captain. The Sherman's plan of affairs is of extreme importance to the Federation. Ah, Kirk Enterprise. Enterprise here. <laughs> security guards from general quarters beam over two and only two security guards. Have the report to Commander Larry. Also authorize shore leave for all off-duty personnel. Yes, Captain. Kirk out. Kirk, Starfleet's gonna hear about this. I'm your two men. Yeah, I've never questioned either the orders of the or the intelligence of any representative of the Federation until now. Scene 3, bar slash store. Like a western general store, this is a combination of two or more functions. Primarily, it is a bar with a few tables and a bar against one wall. 
but a few extra bumps behind the bar should suggest that the trader also runs a general store type of establishment. Kirk and Spock are at the bar just putting down empty glasses. Kirk is shaking his head as he puts down the glass. Looks at, and looks at what... Oh dear. Bill looks at the wheat he holds in his hand. Ever transition. Thanks. Summoned a starship. Our priority A1 channel to guard some storage compartments. Storage compartments of wheat. Uh, Still, Captain, it's a logical precaution. The Klingons would not like to see us successfully develop Sherman's plan. Check off. Mm. Ah, I see you didn't waste time going off off duty. How, uh, how often do we get shore leave? She wanted to shop, and I wanted to help her. Ah, uh, Mr. Chekhov, what do you make of this? Prototype ladder. Cole, I've read about this, but I've never seen it until now. Mr. Spock, does everyone know about this brain but me? Not everyone, Captain. It's a Russian invention. What is going on? Where's the pause button? Spice and flame gems. I already have enough spice and flame gems to last me a lifetime. I'm sad for you, my friend. You'd find a better stone anywhere. Ah, oh, but I have something better. Well, <coughs> surely you want some Ontarian glow water. I used a polish of flame gems. <sighs> you are a most difficult man to reach. Surely you want. <laughs> Not at that price. Ooh, wh what is it? it? Is it alive? May I hold him? It's adorable. What is it? What is it? Well, it, darling, it's a tribble. A, a tribble? It's only the sweetest little creature known to man, and I'm not saying that last line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's furry. Oh, that lady, he's just saying that he likes you. He's adorable. Are you selling them? That's what we're trying to decide right now. My oh, friend, ten credits a piece is a very reasonable price. You can see for yourself how much the lovely little lady here appreciates fine things. Credit a piece. He won't bite, will he? Sir, there is a law against transporting harmful animals from one plant to another. Uh, weren't you aware of that? <laughs> Besides, <laughs> all right, I'll double my offer. Two credits. <laughs> That did not happen. <laughs> Twice nothing is still nothing. Is he clean? He's as clean as you are. I dare say a good deal cleaner. <clears throat> uh, if, if you don't want him, I'll take him. I think he's cute. Alright, four. Is that an offer or a joke? That's my offer. I can see that you're not interested. Alright, fine. My friend, I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I can see you an honest man and lower my price to eight and a half. You're talking yourself out of a deal. Six, not a cent more. Seven and a half. Seven. Alright, you blighter. Six. <laughs> when can I have them? Right away. Uh, how much are you selling them for? Well, let me see. Six credit, they a reasonable markup for a reasonable profit. Ten percent markup, ten credits. In fact, I'll sell you this one. No, no, no. Hey, he's eating my grain. He's eating my grain. Give me the... Give me. He's eating my grain. <laughs> that will be ten credits. <laughs> Sir, that happens to be my sample, and it's mine to do with as I please. And I please to give it to the pretty little lady here. Oh, I could. Do it. Or I could. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I insist. That's right, ruin the market. Ha! Once a pretty little lady here starts to show this little precious around, we won't be able to keep up with them. 
Scene four, our briefing room. Kirk and Spock are having a cup of coffee when the wall panel or desk panel bleeds. Okay. Adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. Here we go. Zoom in just a bit. to remind you of the importance of the Federation of Germany, <laughs> the key to winning our brother on this planet is the grain, the quantum critical. The ship endeavor must be protected. If it is immediately will render any aid and assistance under the secretary Burris may require. The safety of the grain and the products is your responsibility. Start week out. Well, that's just lovely. Oh, but not entirely unexpected. Captain Kerr, Captain Kerr! Kirk here, what's the matter, Lieutenant? Sensors are picking up a Klingon battle cruiser, rapidly closing on the station. Contact Commander Verity, we're on our way. Kirk and Spock race for the door, not even waiting for your hero's acknowledgement. Scene 5 at the Enterprise. Kirk enters the bridge, followed by Spock. What's that Klingon chick doing? Nothing, Captain. He's just sitting there a hundred kilometers off K-7. I have Commander Lurie. Put him on visual, Lieutenant. I do not think that the Klingons are planning to attack us. Commander Larry, there's a Klingon warship hanging 100 kilometers off the station. Now you say you're lying. What? <laughs> I do not think the Klingons are planning to attack us. <coughs> Why not? Because at the moment, the captain of the Klingon ship is sitting here in my office. We're beaming over. Okay, cut. Stop. 